there were those times where where the seizures had taken over to where I couldn't I knew that uh, the death was obviously a part of it and dying part is part of it. So one of the one of the times that was interesting was I actually died twice on on Vimpat. One of the one of the the side effects is if you have a heart attack during an episode, um, you have to be taking it off immediately. So I was on Vimpat and I had two, I guess I had two heart attacks during those episodes. And I was on the, my wife was on the phone, I guess, and was hearing this. And, and so I guess they pumped my chest twice and I got zapped, I guess, and, and shot with the, and I came back. So the whole floor was ecstatic that I had survived because they knew me. And, but I didn't know any of this. I didn't see anything. There was nothing. Okay. So I was, it was black. And one of the, the the core terms that I use is return from the dark void is, is a title that I use for that particular piece with the face that's piled up. Um, and I'll use that as a point of reference, return of the dark from the dark void. So the, the nurses that were on the floor were, were Catholic, quite a few of them. And the doctors were really excited that they, they had saved me. And I still was trying to process all this stuff and didn't even realize this had, ha had happened to me. So they kept me for three or four days um, and I wanted to get home. So I'm just like, I just want to get home. But the nurses kept coming to me and kept saying, oh, Mio, did, did you see any angels? Did you see any angels? So all these ladies kept coming in asking me if I, if I saw any angels. Even the doctors kept it coming in. They were like, what did you experience? And I go, what the fuck do you mean? What did I experience? <laughs> and, and so I started had the process to realize that all these people were really excited that they saved my life. And at this point, I didn't give a fuck. I was so mad and so hurt by going through all this shit that I had enough. And I was like, fucking let me die. It's I'm, I'm cool. I just I'm over it. And so I had to process the fact that all these people were happy that I had lived. Okay. So then I had to come to terms with this whole idea of religion immediately. It was like Jesus, God, religion, Buddhism, whatever the fuck it is, everything. Existentialism. I experienced nothing. I experienced blackness. I experienced darkness. I experienced the leash, the, the, the leash, let's call it. Like basically you're deleted. You're gone. Okay, you've been moved to the trash pile and gone. Okay, and I've seen a lot of death. I've seen a lot of people die in front of me. I've seen people hurt and, and pass in front of me. I've been involved in things and seen things. So I've had to process death many times in my life. So I had this time I had to process my own death, which I had been through a few times, but not to this to this level. So I had to come to terms with that there is no heaven. There is no hell. There is no God. There is no Jesus. There is no, there's nothing, nothing. And nothing is beautiful because there's no more suffering. Everything is gone. It doesn't matter. But what does matter and what heaven to me had to come to terms with was heaven or hell is what you've left behind in other people, that your memories, your imprints. For me as an artist, it's very important because I have artifacts left behind and scratches and bathrooms and whatever the fuck you want to go, little trail you want to go down. But how people process your memory is the type of person you were. Were you a good person? People love you when you're gone. That's what heaven or hell is. Do people care if you die? Do, are people happy about your life force when they think about you? That's heaven or hell. And I had realized I'd been in so, so much turmoil that I had caused hell around people around me because of these seizures, because of these episodes, because of my own selfishness, because of all this other shit that I've been through and put myself through. So I had to realize that uh, fuck heaven, you know, who cares? What, how, what matters is the fact that I care about what other people think about my love life force. And if you are a good person, if you're left behind as a good person. And 
So these seizures have put me so many times so close to the edge of having to process what life force is, what perception means, you know, how, what does perception mean as far as like when you come back from the dark void and how your mind as a computer processes all this, this shit, because we're a dysfunctional computer. Our electric, our electric forces aren't working properly. Our wires are crossed. And so I have interesting seizures because I have them all over my brain. So I have them all over the place. And another time I had to process death was that night when I had my last meal because my doctor put me in an, a, a CT scan and they happened to catch a seizure during the CT scan that was right in the center of my brain. And they had never seen anything like it. So they were tripping and I was supposed to go home. So my family was coming to pick me up after a week being there. And they were like, wait a minute, you can't go home now. I was like, what, what do you mean I can't go home? They're like, we found something in the center of your brain we've never seen before. So we got to hold you now because you're going to die. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <clears throat> fuck. You, you gave me some morphine or some Dilaudid or something? Like, hook me up. Like, this sucks. So... So I was like, well, I guess we got to get a last meal, right, Nate? I got my, I got, I got my last meal. What do we get? What do you order your last meal? You, I guess you have a steak or some shit, right? Like steak. So we Tomahawk got a big steaks, ass, baby. Big ass Brazilian steak. <laughs> Tomahawk steak. Oh god. <laughs>